Howdy folks, welcome back. This is the same 2007 Chevy Trailblazer that we did all the work to. It's been gone for about a week and now it's back. Customer tells me he has no low beam headlights and it's not the bulbs. So there you go, the running lights work, the high beams work, but the low beams do nothing. So that's where we're at. Okie dokie, here's a wiring diagram. So All Data now has these fancy color interactive wiring diagrams. It's pretty sweet, you can actually click on the wires and it kind of traces out where it goes and stuff. If I had a screen recorder that worked, we would use that. But since I can't make that work reliably, we're gonna do it old school on paper. Plus I don't have a color printer, so the fact that it's a color wiring diagram doesn't really help. Anyway, it's basically translated from an OEM wiring diagram into something that you can actually use which is nice for some manufacturers. So GM isn't too bad, most of the domestics, their diagrams are pretty good, other than you have to go through this crazy index to find what you want, but once you get used to it, it's not too bad. But some of them, like, like Nissan or like some of the Korean manufacturers, it's, it's a struggle. They don't put like wiring colors on there, you have to decipher all these codes and stuff. Anyway, I digress. Here's our low beams, left and right. Since they're both not working, I think we need to find the thing that they have in common. So it looks like there's a separate relay for the high beams and the low beams. And then they, the low beams actually have a fuse, this fuse 53. The high beams apparently don't have a fuse before the relay, but they are fused you know, before it comes out of this fuse box to the lights. So I'm not sure why they have a double fuse on the low beams. Doesn't really matter. Let's see if we can find this fuse 53 and this relay 46. Alright, what did I say? If you use 53 on the 4.2 liter, so where's that? Fuse 53, headlight driver module 15 amp. But where is it located? It should be this guy right here. good okay okay since we're good here on fuse 53 I think the next thing we do is turn on the lights and we'll check for power at fuse 6 and if we have power there then we can say the relay and the control side is good this guy right here nothing Okay, cool. Well, since we have no power here at fuse six or fuse three, I think the next thing to do is pull this relay out, relay 46, we'll put in a breakout and we'll see if the problem is on the load side or the control side. So fuse 46 should be this guy right here. Which I just dropped. if I had the right jumper for this one. Hmm. Yeah, this is a different configuration than the one I have. Hold on. Try to get you guys in here where the action is. So, now looking at the diagram, we should have power at pin 2 of that relay all the time. And then we should have a ground at pin 6 all the time. And then it's controlled on pin 5 through this pink and with a white wire. Looks like it comes directly from this body control module. So. Let's see what happens here. So which pin is pin 2? guy right there. So that would be this guy. And we got power there. So that's good. 
Now, pin six is the one by itself, so that's this one right here. Switch our test light over here so that it's a it's checking ground. And we've got a good ground there. Okay. Well, I guess let's check pin five, see if we have power there with the switch on. Then we can rule out the body control module. Pin five is going to be this guy right here. Okay. Jam our test light in there. Let me turn the lights on. And we're good there. Sounds like we have a visitor. All right, what were you saying? I'm starving and I'm ready for lunch. Okay. Okay, the headlight. Yeah. So isn't the headlight switch out just changing out a bulb? Okay. And yeah. you can look at your owner's manual to show you how to do that. Yeah, it probably wouldn't be here if it was just a bulb. I you, feel like think? that's just an excuse. Okay, well, we're getting there. Well, it's a process. All right, well, also I don't think it would be YouTube worthy if it was just a bulb. Probably not. Sad. Might get a lot of views though. How to I change know. the light bulb in your trailblazer. I know. Should I plug my YouTube channel? Are you having a YouTube channel? I have 25 subscribers. Snap. I know. I've got some content for you. <laughs> I know. She's going to be the next April Wilkerson, everybody. No, I'm, I'm not. They're all crafty, woodworking type projects. I want all your outtakes to go to my channel. Okay, I'll make you a video. Okay. I, I promise. It's Mrs. West. This is not a promise. Look me up. Mrs. West. Okay. That's your identity? That's my identity on YouTube. Okie doke. All right, we gotta get back to work. Go subscribe. Why? Come on. <laughs> we don't patronize our viewers. We don't, we don't beg them to subscribe. I wanna see if I can outsubscribe you. Well, I've got With a, no content. <laughs> got a three year head start. I have, yeah, no, that could be a problem. All right. See, this could go onto my, onto my channel. You're holding a recording device right there. Start making videos. Yep. I'll just take your leftover footage. Leftovers? Leftover. Yeah, it's mostly just me picking on you. Basically. All right. All right, so the last test we can do, I'll take a jumper wire with the fuse in it, and I'll just jump power right to this pin four, and we'll see if the lights come on. And they do. Well, that's interesting. I guess we got a bad relay. Well, we got this other relay right here. This is for the fan. It's, it's an electronically controlled viscous clutch on this car. So we'll just move it over and see what happens. There we go. I wanted to see what was inside this relay, see if we could figure out what was going on, but it's all potted inside, so there's, there's no way to see it. It must be a solid state relay, which is interesting to me because it's been my experience that when solid state relays fail, they fail closed. So you wouldn't be able to turn your headlights off. I ordered us a new relay. While we're waiting for that to show up, he says he's got a noise now in the front end. I guess now that we got that AC compressor quieted down, he's hearing all kinds of stuff. So he wanted me to check the wheel bearings. This is the passenger side. It sounds pretty good. The CV axles always make a, you always hear them a little bit when you spin these over, but yeah, that seems okay. Well, the driver's side does not sound as good. You guys hear that? Get you in closer here. Just listen for that rumbling sound. Hear that? 
Sounds like a bad wheel bearing to me. So, I don't know. I guess I should have caught that when I was working on this before. I usually do a walk around and I thought I checked the bearings, but. So it's not loose or anything, but it just has a bit of a rumble to it. So let me find out what's involved in changing out that wheel bearing. And thanks to our friends at the local neighborhood auto parts store, we have a new relay. Broke when delivered, made in Chickadee, China. What could possibly go wrong? Kinda spendy. 30 some dollars for this little guy. And I looked it up, the AC Delco one, closer to 40 bucks. And it's just as Chinese, so we'll try this guy out and see how it works. There we go folks, how to fix the low beams on your 2007 Chevy Trailblazer. Why did that relay fail? I have no idea. Didn't blow any fuses. I did a little bit of wiggling and poking around here. Don't see any crazy amp draws, so just one of those things I think. Got us a new wheel bearing, it's a Moog. 513188 made in Korea. Come on, buddy. I picked up some of these new pinless impact swivel sockets from Gear Wrench. So far, they're pretty sweet. Except when they won't fit because some keener hung the caliper in the way. Real good. Well, this is a bolt in style wheel bearing, so there's three bolts on the back side we've got to get out, and then we've got to drive this thing out of here. And sometimes they're really crusty. This one doesn't look too bad. The backing plate's still in good shape. Cross your fingers. The problem is the bolts come all the way through, and then they get super rusty out here. Then you got to drag all that stuff through the threads in order to get the bolts out. Do it. Oh, 
we'll have to check. I think our new bearing comes with a new wheel speed sensor. So we should be able to just disconnect this old one and replace the whole works. Well, now we have to get the bearing out of the knuckle and it's not really a press fit but 13 Illinois winners it's going to be in there pretty good so everybody's got their favorite way to do it I'll show you what I like to do I like to take the air hammer and come here on one of the corners and just try to get the thing to rotate inside the knuckle and as long as you can get it to break free usually you can take a slide hammer and pull the thing right off Well, that was easy. You see what I'm talking about. Had a couple people in the first video ask me what this tool is. This is a needle scaler. I guess if you live in California or Texas or something, you may have never seen one of these, but it just, basically it's just an air hammer and it has all these steel needles attached to the end of it. And it just rattles that rust and scale off. Like I've said many times before that the rust is so hard that you almost can't grind through it. You have to chip it off first. Just see if it's going to fit. There we go. Like I said, it's not supposed to be a press fit. It's just due to our unique climate, it becomes more than a press fit. I don't know how much good this O-ring is really going to do, but we might as well use it. A little bit of Loctite on those bolts. All right, torque that to factory specs. Should be good to go. Well, you're supposed to replace these axle locking nuts every time you take them off, but just to give you an idea, the local auto parts store had two of these wheel bearings on the shelf. This locking nut is not even available in the national system. It's a special order from the manufacturer. So you think everybody's replacing those? I doubt it. We'll put a little blue Loctite on there. It'll be just fine. All right. Now we'll throw a torque wrench on that once we get the rotor installed. 
inside of this rotor is actually pretty clean. It's just starting to get the classic rust scale out here on the outside. So that's what always happens to them around here. It's gonna need front brakes pretty soon anyway. The pads are about, they're about 30%. Well, I wonder what size that used to be. There we go. Man, I'm on the struggle bus today, folks. There we go. Jeez. Click. Click. It's funny how the clicking of the torque wrench sounds a lot like me trying to hold in a hernia. And we'll apply a little bit of purple goo just for posterity. Well, like I said, it's going to need pads before too long, but they're wearing nice and even, so might as well get all the life out of them that we can. I put the purple goo everywhere except where it was supposed to be. That's better. And we'll torque that to factory spec. Service info says 103 foot-pounds on that axle nut. That doesn't seem like enough, so we're going to do 125 just because it'll drive the pedants crazy. Anyway, I think that's it, guys. Uh, book time on this job is like an hour and a half. Even monkeying around with the camera this morning, I was able to get it done in less than an hour. So we're doing good, but that's because it came apart easily. And I've had some where it's been been a real struggle. Sometimes you got to take the whole knuckle off, put them in a press, heat them up. It can be a, a knockdown drag out fight. But since we got plenty of time left on this job, I think I'll go ahead and rotate his tires. You know, he's complaining about some road noise, so that should help help with that as well. And then we'll be ready to ship this guy out of here. Much better. Okay, folks. That's it. I don't know how it is that I didn't catch this wheel bearing when we were working on this truck before. Feel pretty dumb about that. I must have gotten too focused on that list that he gave me and not kept my eyes and ears open for other problems because yeah, it's, <laughs> it's completely foobar. So at least the owner was paying attention. He, he knew something wasn't right. And he was He was correct. Anyway guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.